So what is Jenkins is Jenkins is basically it's an open source automation server. It is written in Java. So it automates complete software development life cycle. So errors can be detected very early stage of the development. Okay, it is entirely written in Java. So it is easily portable to all major platforms. So Jenkins can run in Windows, Mac, Linux, any platform. Okay, it needs at least Java 8 plus. So for all the latest Jenkins installation, right? The recommended Java version is 11. Okay, it is either 8 or 11. So we will be using 11. So you can run uh, Jenkins inside a Tomcat or as a container or as a standalone application. We have various ways of installations. So few of the features of Jenkins that makes it the first choice for uh, for everyone is first of all, it is open source. It is easy to install. And one of the important things is it has plugins. That means for every task, let's say you wanted to integrate Jenkins with Jira. You wanted to integrate Jenkins with Confluence, Jenkins with, um, you know, GitHub or email notifications like email server SMTP servers like uh, your Gmail or else if you want to integrate with some other tools like Tomcat that also can be done. Okay, so with plugins you can extend the Jenkins functionality. So there are more than 2000 Jenkins uh, plugins available. Okay, so now you can imagine how many integrations we can do with Jenkins and then uh, it has an active community okay so there are many people maintaining these plugins and also it has master it supports master slave architecture okay to manage distributed builds so we'll talk about uh, what is master slave architecture later why this is needed and then uh, it has inbuilt jetty web server so uh, we'll talk about what is this inbuilt jetty web server uh, basically jenkins comes as a war file so how do you deploy this war file basically you will put it in the tomcat server right so this is the uh, normal uh, yes. thing that we do but you can also run this uh, war uh, jar file just like java hyphen jar and this war file let's say this war file is uh, jenkins.war so you can run it like this okay so how it is able to run with a simple java command is in build it has a web server known as jetty that means it doesn't need an external web server basically jenkins was first developed under the name hudson so it was a project by the sun microsystems so if someone says about hudson so remember it is a jenkins itself so what Jenkins can do? So Jenkins can call clone your source code from version controlling systems. It can build your applications using build tools like Gradle, Maven, etc. It can do automation, uh, automated. It can run automated test cases using frameworks like Selenium, JUnit. For uh, Python, we have the PyTest or robot frameworks. So these are these are all uh, integrations through plugins. Okay. So remember, Jenkins may not come with all these extensions. So we have to uh, you know according to the requirement we will install them okay and then it can deploy to autom automatically it can deploy to various environments like dev uat anything okay uh, it can also execute com some shell scripts okay remember as i said it is an automation server it can run your shell scripts some basic shell commands then it can also send some notifications like email okay it can integrate with third party tools like nexus sonar cube jira okay so it has a vast plugin support like nearly you know 2000 so this is a jenkins cycle when developer commits to repository jenkins will build uh, build the source code through a trigger okay whenever you push the source code to the repository a trigger known as webhook uh, will be triggered that will trigger your ci pipeline and after that a build is successful you have the test pipeline not the pipeline it's like a stage and then it will have a deployment stage so everything is automated so jenkins plugins are you know way to extend your jenkins functionality okay it's not like you can only uh, automatically download them from the jenkins ui you can also manually download the dot hpi file okay so again this is an important interview question how do you manually install jenkins plugins okay let's say if you have a repository of jenkins plugins you download the hpi file and then you manually upload it in this section okay so we'll sh i'll show you how to do it okay so jenkins plugins extension is dot hpi okay so when you go from the ui it's like an app store okay so once you go to the app store you click on install button that is automatic installation okay mm -hmm. let's say your uh, you know the your mobile phone doesn't have internet connection okay but you have the you know in android basically uh, the extension format is the apk file if you have 
so that is in uh, you know it's an um, you know application you will install this apk file right similarly if your jenkins instance doesn't have any internet connection you download the hpa file from somewhere you copy into the jenkins instance and let uh, jenkins install uh, from there so we have a lot of uh, plugins uh, very important ones we are going to see github uh, maven and JUnit plugin deploy to container plugin this is basically tomcat plugin okay build pipeline view plugin docker plugin jira pl uh, plugin mailer plugin slack notifications if you want to trigger ec2 instances it is amazon ec2 plugin pipeline plugin test result analyzer okay blue ocean so there are a lot of plugins master slave configuration okay so what is master slave configuration basically basically when we are talking about jenkins right so jenkins server so this server in uh, apart from running and building your jobs it also does a lot of other things okay so it can have a job of uh, taking the backup of backup at regular intervals or uh, you know doing the authorization and authentication part right so it uh, sometimes what happens is if you start building more and more jobs in the same jenkins instance so it may load your jenkins server and it may slow down your jobs so this jenkins server which we call it as a master server so what we generally do is we will not run any jobs here okay like build jobs ci cd any jobs so what we'll do is we'll create something known as agents jenkins agents so these are like separate linux or uh, instances these are vms okay this is also a vm this is also a vm okay so these are all agents that means if you wanted to run a job okay so their job is you wanted to build a war file okay so you can tell the master to run the job in this vm now let's say you have windows based job okay but this is a linux machine okay you will create a windows agent and ask the master to run that particular job in the windows agent now you can also have dynamic agents that means in see these agents are you know uh, permanent agents that means these are all linux vms they'll remain permanently connected to the master let's say you wanted to run a job but you want you don't want to spin a permanent vm and run it instead you wanted to create a docker container run your job and once your job is done it jenkins should automatically delete that container so these are called dynamic agents that means for your job you are creating a container running all your job required automation job here and once your job is done you'll delete that container so these are all permanent agents and these are all called dynamic agents that means dynamically you're provisioning a infra for your job and then you're deleting or collapsing that infra once your job is done so why do we need is we don't want to mask uh, load the jenkins server that's why we have the agents and in some cases if you need any specific environment for a specific job okay let's say you have few jobs that need high cpu high gpu and high ram right in which jenkins master may, may not provide in that case i'll create a vm okay with a high-end configuration and connect this like an agent right and whenever i need jobs of, of whenever i have jobs with these configurations this master can delegate that job to such agents so okay. when you are creating a job you can tell which agent you wanted to run okay you wanted to run in linux agents then any of the linux agent can uh, you know uh, take that job or you can okay. if, if you want to run it in only this job so you particularly give the node name mm -hmm. okay. okay if you want to particularly run as a docker container then agent will change it's like uh, you know you're giving uh, the name of the person to whom you wanted to delegate that job but in, in in this persons are nothing but your agents these are all vms yeah this, this is an ec2 instance this is an ec2 this is an ec2 even this is also an ec2 even your jenkins instance is also an ec2 yeah. so let's say maven based job okay so i don't want to install maven in all the machines so i'll dedicate an agent with maven installed here so for all the maven jobs i'll run it here simple uh, let's say you have a maven job okay then simply as an agent what i'll do 
i'll create a docker container from the maven docker image what what is the use of taking the maven docker image because maven is all, already installed in the docker image then mm -hmm. my maven job can run it in the container when the job is done it will automatically delete that container these are permanent vms containers pods are dynamic that means dynamically they'll get created because mm -hmm. you are not creating them before they'll get created they'll run that job they'll get deleted automatically okay so that is the so-called jenkins master slave configuration so we can have the yeah. windows based agents you can have the linux based agents you have the docker container based agents okay so what is master is it holds all the key configurations of your jenkins acts like a controller or an orchestrator okay it will schedule and monitor all the build jobs it can also delegate some jobs to the agents okay it will also see whether your slaves or agents are online or offline it will continuously send some pings to see if jenkins slaves are online or due to some issues they are offline okay it will also record the build result that means if the build is happening here your, your jenkins master will know slave is nothing but a java executable that runs on a remote machine that means what we generally do is we take a we download a jar file from the master and we'll run it here and how do how we'll run this jar file is this jar file okay have the configuration of your master's url port number etc so now when we run the jar file here automatically this jar file will connect to the master so you run your jar file here it will connect to the master you run your so for docker agents it is not needed okay basically you run a small jar file then the jar file will connect to the master and one more thing for linux there is one more way which is ssh way that means master can connect to the slave through ssh it can also connect through a jar file so this is a uh, one more uh, you know a way okay that's it for this video guys if you like our video consider subscribing to our youtube channel and joining our facebook group the links are given in the description below you can also scan the qr codes being displayed in this video and for any training requirements you can join our telegram channel where we post regular updates on our upcoming trainings you can also whatsapp us on the number being shown here you can also drop us an email for any kind of training inquiries thank you